A lot of people get confused when it comes to time complexity, but the concept of time complexity is actually pretty simple when you break it down into manageable parts. Maybe you're struggling to solve problems that require a better understanding of time complexity, or maybe you just want to expand your computer science fundamental knowledge. In this video, I'm going to explain the essential time complexity topics. Let's get into it. First, I want to mention what time complexity is not. Time complexity is not about speed. It does not answer the question, how fast will this run, which is a common misconception. This isn't in terms of seconds or minutes, it's actually a function of process time and input size. With that being said, what is time complexity? Time complexity helps software engineers answer the question, how efficient is my algorithm if my input size grows? So when we ask what is an algorithm's time complexity, we are giving an estimate of its efficiency. And one of the tools we use to help us analyze this efficiency is called Big O Notation. What is Big O Notation? Big O Notation is a shorthand that gives us an approximation of the worst case or upper bound of the work an algorithm performs as the input size grows. In other words, how much does the work increase if the number of elements I'm working with increases? We use the letter O, which stands for order of approximation, and parentheses to describe the approximate efficiency of a given algorithm. For example, O of n, O of 1, O of log n, O of n squared, O of n log n. We'll take each of these one by one. We'll use an array to help illustrate. If you don't know what an array is, it's a data structure that holds elements in consecutive bytes of memory. Usually we draw them as boxes next to each other. They can be accessed by index very efficiently and that number usually starts at zero. So if an array has 10 elements, we can access each element like this, index zero all the way up to index nine. What is O of one? As we just saw, arrays have a superpower. You can access an element very quickly with minimal work if you use its index. So if we access the first element of an array, we call this O of one or constant time complexity. No matter how big the array is, accessing the first element or any element for that matter by its index is very efficient. This is called constant time. Regardless of the array size, accessing array element by index takes the same amount of work or time. This means it is very efficient and does not get worse as the input size grows. We'll look at this more when we talk about data structures, but this is why data structures exist. They unlock superpowers in our data. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified so you don't miss when my next video on data structures is ready. What is O of n? O of n stands for linear time complexity. This means the work or time increases linearly with each added element to the input size. If you add more items to the input, the work time increases proportionately. Let's look at an example. We'll take our array and give it 10 random elements. To search for a specific element, we would need to both look at and check each element in the array. This would take O of n time. Our work would increase the same with the size of the array. So if our array had 100 or 100,000 elements, we would still need to check each and every element to confirm if our array has that item or not. This means that our work of searching would increase proportionately with the number of elements added. If it took 100 seconds to to search 100 items, it would take 100,000 seconds to search 100,000 items. Searching an unsorted array has a time complexity of O of n. This is significantly slower than accessing an array element by index, but this is the nature of arrays. All data structures have trade-offs. Each has superpowers and weaknesses as well. A quick note about worst case scenario. If you needed to confirm that an array did not have an element, you'd have to check all elements at least once, even to the very end. This is why big O notation uses the upper bound or worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is you'd have to check all n items all the way to the last item to confirm if that item Item is truly not in the array. If we use this upper bound, we know the algorithm will not perform worse than this, and that is something we can rely on and reason about. And if you were to plot O of n on a graph, it looks like a straight line. O of 1 does not increase at all, whereas O of n increases linearly. And in terms of efficiency, this is not bad at all. And in reality, this is the most efficient way to solve certain problems that require checking each element. What is O of log n? O of log n stands for logarithmic time complexity. This is the time complexity where the workload is halved each time and is very efficient on large data sets. For this example, let's say we want to find an element in a sorted array. We could search every element like before in O of n time 
time, but if we know the data is already sorted, we can take advantage of an algorithm called binary search. This allows a much faster way to search sorted data structures. Think binary search tree or BST if you're familiar with them. Binary search works like this. One, get the midpoint of a sorted array. Two, compare midpoint with search target. If match is found, return true. Three, if target is less, disregard entire right half of array. 4. If target is greater, disregard entire left half of array. 5. Find midpoint of new halved array and repeat. 6. If not found, return false. This is significantly faster than O of n. If we had 100 elements in an array, O of n would take 100 checks, worst case, because the search target could be the 100th element, whereas binary search would take at most 7 checks because the searchable area is reduced by half at each midpoint check. For reference, exponential and logarithmic are opposite sides of the same coin. Logarithmic Logarithmic is the inverse of exponential. In terms of time complexity, logarithmic is usually great for an algorithm, meaning very efficient, whereas exponential is not so great. You'll want to steer clear of exponential solutions, if at all possible, because they quickly get out of hand as the size of n grows. What if our data isn't sorted already? A number of problems become easier if we have sorted data. So sometimes it makes sense to sort the data before you solve the problem. Sorting is useful for all kinds of reasons, and many efficient sorting algorithms are O of n log n because it takes log n to split an array into halves through divide and conquer and we need to sort n items by comparing each item we get o of n times log n or o of n log n a sorting algorithm like merge sort is o of n log n which is much faster than other sorting algorithms like bubble sort or selection sort that are o of n squared if we look at o of n log n on a graph we can see it's slightly worse than o of n but much better than o of n squared lastly we'll look at o of n squared. If you see yourself trying to solve a problem with nested for loops, it's likely quadratic or n squared. You may have tried to solve two sum with nested loops, and if you were to try to analyze how much work was being performed, you'd see that for each element, you are searching the entire array each time. This makes it n squared. For two sum, we can sacrifice a little memory by storing the complement to the number we are looking for, and look for the complement in a hash on each iteration, which is O of 1. O of 1 is very efficient, and this solution increases our efficiency significantly. We can go from something like beats 8% of solutions on lead code to beats 93%. If we plot n squared on a graph, we can see that it is significantly worse than other approaches, and so it should be avoided whenever possible. Double for loops are sometimes necessary. It's good to be cautious with nested for loops, but it's also important to note that nested for loops are necessary to solve certain types of problems. For example, searching a random matrix for an element can't be solved more efficiently than m times n. This is actually linear and not quadratic because this would only touch each element once since we're searching a 2D matrix and not a 1D array. A quick note on space complexity. I didn't really cover it in this video, but it's important to realize that there is also the concept of space complexity, which is often a trade-off in determining the constraints of your algorithm and the hardware it will be running on. It's possible to improve time complexity but compromise on space complexity and vice versa. In the example I mentioned above of twosum, if we store the complement number in a dict or hash, we can significantly significantly speed up the algorithm by storing O of n space complexity. Worst case scenario, we would need to store n items in a hash until we get to the very end of our loop. But we only need to loop once, and so it becomes O of n time complexity and O of n space complexity. A trade-off for sure, but way faster on a large data set. I'm planning some videos on data structures, so make sure to stay tuned for those. As always, I'll leave some helpful links in the description, and thanks for watching.